Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Smoking Android and our last and final uh, episode in our Cyan Engine Mod series. So, we're going to go ahead and get right to her and jump into performance. So once you're in your settings menu, you're going to go ahead and select Cyanage Mod Settings once again. We'll scroll on down to Performance. And of course you're going to be getting the uh, proverbial warning dragons ahead. The options in here will change the performance of your system, potentially for the worse. They are included for ex uh, experimentation and we request that you do not file bug reports if you have changed any from the defaults. So basically what they're saying there is that um, once you get into this menu, um, uh, as stated performance, um, you are messing with some of the system performance uh, options, such as um, you know uh, overclocking, underclocking your CPU, um, a, a, a plethora of other things in here that we'll, uh, we'll get to. <clears throat> so um, with that said, we're going to go ahead and start with CPU settings. Now... Um, most, I believe most in all Sanage and Mod releases out there, depending on your phone, um, come with a built-in uh, overclocked kernel. So um, what that means to you is that, um, you know, there, there's a whole, usually per phone, there's a huge list of um, custom kernels that are generally available f to your phone uh, b uh, by um, certain developers out there uh, in the community. Um, Instead of going through a huge list and picking certain kernels and, oh, this is beta version, and, oh, you can push and overclock this, but it's unstable, and this, that, and the other, um, Cyan Engine Mod comes with an overclock kernel uh, that you can mess with <clears throat> and is uh, pretty darn stable. Um, depending on the particular kernel you have, um, it's actually dependent on what kind of phone you have. It, it is dependent and it varies. So for what you see on my phone may completely different, may be completely different from what you're able to uh, see on other phones. Um, now, f as an example, um, some of the available governors, this isn't beta mode. So, uh, you know, depending on your phone, um, they may finally have a good release candidate and you'll see some different governors available such as uh, performance and power save, on demand, conservative. Um, to give you an idea of uh, what that means, performance mode basically means that it'll be running at maximum performance all time. So, uh, you know, for games and, uh, um, you know, if you want your maximum web browsing experience and opening and closing apps quicker. Um, but it is going to drain your battery a lot faster. Um, then in my particular uh, build of Sanage Mod here, um, uh, the, the lighting's not getting it very well for you guys, but as you can see, it uh, there's a power save, and um, what power save will do is um, you know it'll it'll drop a lot of the uh, the frequencies and everything like that down to minimum to basically run. See again, this is beta, but to give you an example, so you'd click on power save, you know, and you might see um, see mine set at 1300 megahertz, you might see it drop down uh, lower, and um, there's uh, good bow, uh, power savings there. Um, another one being, um, you know, uh, on demand. Um, basically, whenever I, I f believe, from what I understand, is it'll keep um, it'll keep your frequencies low enough, and then as soon as you, uh, an app demands higher resources, then it'll start pulling it. Um, whereas, for instance, you know, your power save or your conservative will try and keep the frequencies low all the time, meaning that when you're opening up apps or playing games that you will probably notice some lag, but that's because the CPU is running at a lower frequency, so um, in order to conserve battery power. Um, you can also set it to uh, to, to, to whatever you want um, on boot, whereas uh, in some situations you, um, you know, you may only want to run it at um, um, the uh, pa uh, performance mode most of the time, say for instance when you're playing games, as soon as you're done playing a game you want to reboot your phone for whatever reason, when it powers back up it could be saved at the power save option. Um, so uh, it's up to you, it's, it's, that's personal preference there. Um, but uh, I still personally use set CPU. This was kind of designed so that you don't have to use third-party um, CPU tweaking apps. I still use set CPU just because then you can also set the um, undervolting um, for even further performance or sorry uh, battery saving um, tweaks there. Um, <clears throat> 
the Del Delvic Just-in-Time Compiler. Now, <clears throat> I don't exactly understand what it is. I'm sure if I did some Googling or you guys did some Googling, if you want to leave a comment below letting everybody else know what the, uh, the JIT um, does. But um, enabling and disabling JIT, basically enabling JIT um, is supposed to give you some performance. And um, if you don't, then if you don't notice any performance boost, then you don't enable it. I, for one, and of course this could be the placebo effect, um, but I, for one, have noticed a performance increase using the um, JIT enabled. So I've left that out there. Um, surface dithering, uh, it's going to make things... Um, it just makes it a little prettier, you know, I, I don't know exactly how it does it, but uh, it does tend to make things a little bit prettier looking, but um, it does, uh, like it says, um, dithering surface improves image quality at the cost of performance. Now, when you've got, in, in my uh, instance here with my Motorola, Motorola Atrix, it's got a dual core processor. Am I really concerned about performance? Probably not. I probably have a processor that can handle um, some 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 extra um, image quality and so on. So I can kind of leave that out there. Um, allow purging of assets. Uh, system can free more RAM when needed if asset bitmap memory can be reclaimed. To me, that means nothing. Um, you know. Although I, I would say I'm an above average user, um, this kind of stuff is probably a little beyond me and I probably don't need to get in there. Um, lock home in memory. Uh, lock the uh, attempt to keep the current home app in memory at all times. Now, um, what that basically, as far as I understand, means that um, the home app being your launcher, I'm going to assume. Um, anyways, It'll be the same. It'll have the same effect as lock messaging app in memory. Now I keep the messaging app in memory because um, um, avoid lost messages on low memory. It, apparently, it still uses up a huge amount of RAM, but I'm running a gig of RAM. Um, um, I don't know if that's what they're talking about in here, but it. it uh, random access memory, I don't know. Either way, um, I'm not really too concerned. I have a lot of RAM on a couple of different fronts, so um, I'm pretty comfortable there. And uh, VM heap size, <clears throat> um, I'm assuming VM stands for virtual memory, uh, requires a reboot. I haven't messed with this. I don't know what kind of a difference it makes to my phone. Um, my phone runs just fine the way it is, so I tend not to mess with things I don't really know. And I recommend you guys not uh, uh, messing with things you don't know either. Um, mind you, you could always Google it, and if you do find that it would uh, come in handy for you, you know where to find it. Um, so that's uh, that's basically the performance settings. Um, you know, you can tweak it. A lot of these things requires reboots. Um, <clears throat> I pretty much only mess with the CPU settings. You can change the frequencies at which your uh, at which your uh, phone's running. Um, I have it usually set on power save, and um, the minimum set, the CPU frequency set to 260. And again, when I use set CPU, I have it set so that um, you know there's a profile. <clears throat> so I have it set so that when the screen's turned off, it's only running at 216 megahertz at all times. And then uh, when I turn my phone on, then it will. Uh, bump back up to whatever it needs, but uh, regardless, that's that's what that is. Um, next thing, we're going to move on to uh, sound, and that'll be our... Oh, oh, and after sound, there'll be one more little uh, thing that I'll show you, which is the tablet tweaks, and we'll get to that right after sound, and that'll pretty much uh, be the end of it. So let's uh, jump on into sound. Okay, so we're in sound. Notification focus. Audio focus requests causes compatible apps to lower the volume while notifications play. Um, this I found in, I believe, doo -doo 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 -doo, where the hell was it? Um, I think it was interface. And uh, anyways, it was in the, one of the first videos that I had on. Um, but uh, it's basically so that when you do get a notification, instead of the uh, music stopping and then and then playing the notification and then coming back to the same loud uh, sound, say for instance if you're listening to MP3s in the car or something like that, um, this will kind of do a gradual thing um, with that. Blah 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 blah. So uh, silent state out of state for complete silence to volume. Um, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory. Vibrate during calls. You can make quiet hours. Um, 
my wife thought that was pretty handy. Um, I know there's going to be a few of you that uh, will as well. So that's pretty neat. It even includes that dim LED. LED will be full brightness. You can dim that down if you want. That's kind of cool. So that's basically the notification LED that you get a, at your phone instead of it just you know, in the middle of the night, I'm sure you, you would probably notice that, you know, a green flashing on the wall. Um, well, you can apparently dim that down, which is a really cool feature. Always play on speaker. You've got notifications, ringtones, and alarms. I'm assuming that's even when you have something, say, an auxiliary plugged in. Um, whenever notifications happen, you can change it so that it always plays on the, uh, the speaker, the, the internal phone speaker. Um, whoops. Whoops. Um, attenuation of set volume notifications so basically you can change the decibel levels um, to be completely honest with you I don't really know how that differs from say for instance the the um, the main menu volume you know and then and then this because um, I can use incoming call volume for notifications or I can change my alarm you know what I mean? So I don't really understand <laughs> how that helps me, but uh, anyways, I suppose you can mess around with it. Um, volume if music is playing. Music notifications, so attuated system setting, music volume. So there you go. That's uh, that sound. Um, a lot of it's pretty self-explanatory, and it's actually a um, pretty useful stuff in sounds there. Now. The last one, tablet tweaks. Settings most useful for tablet devices. Um, bottom status bar. Now this was designed for tablets, but it is uh, available to phones, I believe. Um, the bottom status bar. The reason why they made it is because you know if you got your you've got your um, your tablet, you know you're holding it there. It's easy just to scroll up with your thumb on the status bar instead of like reaching way up here and grabbing it and dragging it down. So, if we were to go ahead and um, check that out, as you can see there, it's now at the bottom. Enable it back at the top, right there, and uh, everything comes up from the bottom. It's kind of neat, I mean, see here. I guess it's, it's different, you know, it's different. I don't like it. <laughs> um, apparently you can uh, dead zone, add a dead zone of half screen width to the middle of the status bar. So let's go ahead and uh, enable that. And um, I don't know what's going on. Bottom, okay. So, ah. Okay. Enable that. Uh... I don't know. I'm assuming that would mean that if you had a tablet, it would stop the notification bar halfway because, I mean, depending on a tablet, you know, you got a 10 inch screen and it's, you don't exactly need the whole bloody screen, you know, with the pull down notification bar, I suppose. So, anyways, that's just something for you to play with there if you have a, uh, if you have a tablet. Um, disable lock screen when enabled does not show the lock screen or pattern screen neither on boot nor when waking the device pretty self-explanatory so there you go guys that's it for our cyanogen mod series I hope that uh, helped some of the new users out there who wanted to get into cyanogen mod but weren't quite sure about what's so different between cyanogen mod and all the other ROMs out there and hopefully it helps some of the more advanced users that are used to cyanogen mod but uh, weren't aware of what some of these settings did um, I mean, I, I know of myself personally, if uh, if I didn't go looking and finding out what some of these did, I probably wouldn't ever bother you trying to, you know, use them. But uh, now that I know what they do, and you know what they do, they're pretty cool. Anyways, guys, um, thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to rate, subscribe, and comment. Give me a little thumbs up there. Um, do subscribe for, fur for future. Furcher? For furcher. Do subscribe for future videos in the future about apps and hacks and tweaks, stuff like that. Doing it all the time, as well as um, some cool game reviews. I've got a couple up my sleeve coming out soon, so uh, do subscribe and we'll, uh, we'll get to those as well. As I've got some uh, really cool apps um, that require root. Uh, that I'm going to be doing some videos on, so stay tuned for those. Cheers, guys. Till next time. Peace.